Salve Regina, Matemi se ricordie, Vita dulceto, et spes nostra salute. A te clamamos, exules filii neve, a te suspiramos, gementes et lentes, in ac lacrima. Welcome everyone and good morning. Today is the Feast of Saints Peter and Paul, two of the heavy hitters in the church, these great lights whose example can inspire us, help us to grow in faith, hope, and in love. Now the readings today that we have set, obviously we call to mind the color is red because they gave their lives, martyred in the city of Rome. Take a moment right now just to prepare our hearts for whatever special prayer intentions you have. Let's ask the Lord to be with us now. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. My dear friends, let us call to mind our sin, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us and forgive us our sin and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you. We bless you. We adore you. We glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us, for you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who on the solemnity of the Apostles Peter and Paul give us the noble and holy joy of this day, grant, we pray, that your Church may in all things follow the teaching of those through whom she received the beginnings of right religion. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever.
reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In those days, King Herod laid hands upon some members of the church to harm them. He had James, the brother of John, killed by the sword. And when he saw that this was pleasing to the Jews, he proceeded to arrest Peter also. It was the Feast of Unleavened Bread. He had him taken into custody and put in prison under the guard of four squads of four soldiers each. He intended to bring him before the people after the Passover. Peter thus was being kept in prison, but prayer by the church was fervently being made to God on his behalf. On the very night before Herod was to bring him to trial, Peter, secured by double chains, was sleeping between two soldiers, while outside the door, guards kept watch on the prison. Suddenly the angel of the Lord stood by him, and a light shone in the cell. He tapped Peter on the side and awakened him, saying, Get up quickly. The chains fell from his wrists. The angel said to him, Put on your belt and your sandals. He did so. Then he said to him, Put on your cloak and follow me. So he followed him out, not realizing that what was happening through the angel was real. He thought he was seeing a vision. They passed the first guard, then the second, and came to the iron gate leading out to the city, which opened for them by itself. They emerged and made their way down an alley, and suddenly the angel left him. Then Peter recovered his senses and said, Now I know for certain that the Lord sent his angel and rescued me from the hand of Herod and from all that the Jewish people were expecting. The word of the Lord. The response, the Lord delivered me from all my fears. The Lord delivered me from all my fears. I will bless the Lord at all time. His praise shall be ever in my mouth. Let my soul glory in the Lord. The lowly will hear me and be glad. The Lord delivered me from all my fears. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us together extol his name. I sought the Lord, and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. The Lord delivered me from all my fears. Look to him that you may be radiant with joy and your faces may not blush with shame. When the poor one called out, the Lord heard, and from all his distress he saved him. The Lord delivered me from all my fears. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them. Taste and see how good the Lord is. Blessed the man who takes refuge in him. The Lord delivered me from all my fears. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. I, Paul, am already being poured out like a libation, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have competed well, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. From now on the crown of righteousness awaits me, which the Lord, the just judge, will award to me on that day, and not only to me, but to all who have longed for his appearance. The Lord stood by me and gave me strength, so that through me the proclamation might be completed and all the Gentiles might hear it. And I was rescued from the lion's mouth. The Lord will rescue me from every evil threat and will bring me safe to his heavenly kingdom. To him be glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus went into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? They replied, Some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, 
Still others, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter said in reply, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus said to him in reply, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah. For flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my heavenly Father. And so I say to you, you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of the netherworld shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Happy Feast to all of you. This is a solemnity in the church, a day in which we recognize these two heavy hitters, St. Peter and St. Paul. Their contribution is vast. Their influence profound from the very beginnings of the church and their work and their efforts continue to shape the lives of disciples to this day through the writings in the New Testament, the books that we know were either written by St. Paul or are ascribed to St. Paul, the influence of Peter, his work within configuring the early church as the head of the disciples and the apostles. But one of the things that's amazing about a day like today is that it gives us all hope because when we think about the incredible influence the difference they made in the life of faith as disciples of Christ. We take to heart the simple fact that they were not perfect. We take to heart that as flesh and blood, they made plenty of their own mistakes. They made their share of shortcomings, failures. And God worked with them. This is an important spiritual principle. God met them where they were at and invited them to grow. God constantly kept directing attention to Peter and Paul in their moment of need where they were ready just to take that next step. I think about all the ways in which, you know, St. Peter, who's going to deny his friend three times because he's scared. Think of Paul who was actively persecuting the church and doing a pretty good job of it. And he was vindictive, arresting people and dragging them away out of their homes. And he will, in turn, become this great evangelist, an apostle to the Gentiles, proclaiming good news. And his letters continue to inspire and give hope today. Both men will offer their lives for Jesus. They're going to go through a lot of hardship and sufferings. They're going to know about difficulty, trial, and loss. But Jesus will give them the strength they need, even to face their martyrdoms. For those who might not recall it, St. Peter is crucified upside down in Rome. St. Paul will be beheaded. They will give the ultimate gift that we can give to Christ, their very life, out of love for the one who died and rose to set us free. Now, if God will meet Peter and Paul where they're at and invite them to take the next step, God does the same thing for us, that God invites us and God who understands our hearts better than we do, God who knows our shortcomings, God who knows our sins, and God who sent Jesus to save and set us free, to get us out of the hot mess we find ourselves in because of sin. Friends, if Christ is willing to be patient and meet Peter and Paul where they were and bring them to this tremendous influence in the life of faith, Imagine how God will use us in our everyday affairs, within our families and friendships, where we work, where we live, that when we say, Lord, I want to follow you, Lord Jesus, I trust in you, but Lord, I'm not perfect, help me. Christ will help. That the great hope that we have today in the light of faith is that just as Jesus gave what Peter and Paul needed to take that next step, he will give it to us. And so, folks, I don't care what our backstory is. I don't care what we've done, sinned, said in the past. What I care about is how will we take the sum of our life right now to say either, Lord, I want to follow you, broken and wounded with all my mistakes. Lord, I want to follow you, serve you. Help me. Christ can work with that. Christ will work with that. 
and through the brokenness within our own lives, through our own sins, shortcomings, and failures, when we put our lives in the hands of Jesus, our life will be blessed. God will work with us in ways we don't even begin to imagine. But it means that we let go of our fear. It means that we grab onto our faith. It means we trust in the one who knows us through and through and accept his invitation to take the next step today by what we say and what we do as we offer our lives in service of the Lord. God bless you all. Now this is the solemnity, and so would you please stand as we offer the creed, recalling the great faith to which these two saints were a part of. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We offer our prayers this day for our needs and the needs of the church. We pray for all those following the example of Saints Peter and Paul, who will be martyred this day for their faith in Christ. That the example of all the martyrs and saints will inspire us to make an offering of our lives to the Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all who are sick, for all of our loved ones, for those who are in need of healing, and for all medical personnel who work to assist bringing comfort and relief we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all of our leaders in the church, but through the example of Saints Peter and Paul, our leaders, bishops, priests, the Holy Father, will help us to offer our lives to Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all agricultural workers, for all those who work in the fields to put food on our table, for their safety and well-being, we pray to the Lord. Lord. Hear our prayer. For all of you at home, for the prayers that you offer in the comment line, for all of us, for the prayers we now offer in silence, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the intention of this Mass, for Gerald and Norma Sabian, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious and loving God, look kindly upon us. Hear the prayers we offer now, spoken and silent. We make them all in the name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. O oh God, we earnestly ask you to bless our diocese with many priests, brothers, sisters, and deacons who will love you with their whole mind and heart and gladly spend their entire lives serving your church and making you known and loved. Bless our family. Choose from our homes those needed for your work. Mary, Queen of the Clergy, pray for us. Pray for our priests, religious and deacons. Obtain for us the Lord. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For your goodness we have this bread to offer. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become the bread of life.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our loving Father. May the prayer of the apostles, O Lord, accompany the sacrificial gift that we present to your name for consecration, and may their intercession make us devoted to you in celebration of the sacrifice. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For by your providence, the blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, bring us joy. Peter foremost in confessing the faith, Paul its outstanding preacher. Peter who established the early church from the remnant of Israel. Paul, master and teacher of the Gentiles that you call. And so each, in a different way, gathered together the one family of Christ. And revered together throughout the world, they share one martyr's crown. And therefore, with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. But through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. And may he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect 
especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, St. Augustine, our patron, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. And may this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis our Pope, James our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. And to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory in Christ our Lord, through whom you'll bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty, Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress and useless worry as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you in my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Grant us, O Lord, who have been renewed by this sacrament, so to live in the church that, persevering in the breaking of the bread and in the teaching of the apostles, we may be one heart and one soul, made steadfast in your love. Through Christ our Lord. Just a couple of announcements. My friends, as we embark now, I mean, June is almost done, and we begin the month of July. I'm asking everyone I know to do whatever they can to be very good to themselves. It's been a crazy, intense time, and for many people, very filled with stress. Please be gentle, first with ourselves, but then with the people around us. Summer is a great time to reconnect, take a walk, have a campfire, go see a friend. Fortunately, in our area, at least the trend with the number of cases with COVID is going in the right direction. May we take advantage of this gift of time to renew and reconnect. For those who'd like a copy of the email or the, the homily sent to you, you can email it, get it emailed. Go to my website, studypraiserve.com. Put in your email address, it'll be sent to you every day. And for those who wish to get the daily podcast, just put in your search engine, Catholic Inspiration Podcast. It'll come up and you can use whatever platform you like to get it as a podcast. Please stand. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Have a great day.